welcome all. Today we're going to go ahead and create ourselves an environment for development. There are a few things which we need to do and install from the net. As you can see, I am using a Windows virtual machine here. I'm not actually a Windows user myself, but I figured that most of you will be using Windows, so I'll show you how to do it in Windows first. And there will be a section down below that will show you how to do it in Linux. Once you set the environment up in Windows, in Linux, and on Mac, I'll most likely do a demo on how to, how to do it on a Mac as well. Uh, the development will be pretty much the same. There will be no differences. Once you open up the development environment, it's the same on all three systems. There pretty much are no differences aside from the cosmetic ones. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my virtual machine into full screen mode so you won't see anything in the background. Excellent, there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and proceed with our installation. Now I'm using a fresh install of Windows. There is nothing else installed on this system. I have installed Windows maybe like 10 minutes ago and now I, I've set it up. I've created this virtual machine of Windows like 10 minutes ago and now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to actually install, how to actually set up the development environment. The IDE which we will be using is called Atom and it is cross-platform, so you can install it on Mac, Linux, and Windows as well without any problems. Aside from that, we will need a development server, uh, so we will go ahead and download that as well. The very first thing that I'm going to do here is actually download Firefox. <laughs> Some of you might wonder why didn't I do it like before? But I really wanted to like go from scratch, quite literally, on a fresh installed, uh, on a fresh installed Windows machine where there is literally nothing else. So there is nothing. Yes, go ahead, install. Gotta love the Windows permission system where you just click yes and that's it. Okay, so downloading Firefox, this shouldn't take too long. I, I kind of don't know my way around Explorer. I'm gonna give you the heads up so I didn't wanna look too confusing. I'm just gonna download it quickly and then we'll actually proceed into download. Now, while this is going on, keep in mind that you can use whichever browser you want. So you, I would advise you to either use Firefox or Chrome. So one of the two. Uh, I wouldn't really advise using Internet Explorer. In the past, it has been known to be incompatible with some of the newer technologies, so to say. I hear that the newer versions of Explorer are working just fine with pretty much everything, but back, in, I don't know, a couple of, I haven't used it in a very long time, so I don't know, but back in the day, I know that it was incompatible with a lot of things and that it was lagging behind in terms of technology is applied to it quite a good deal behind Firefox and Chrome. So definitely use either Firefox or Chrome. Go ahead and you can go ahead and download either one of those two. Both of them are completely free browsers uh, from the net. Firefox is completely open source as well. I would recommend that you use Firefox, but I cannot really say that there are any technical reasons why I'm recommending Firefox over Chrome. It's mostly my sentimental reasons because I'm using it on Linux as well. Also on Mac, you can use the Mac browser. It shouldn't be a problem either. So you can use Safari there without any problems. Uh, don't import anything, next. Yes, I would like you to use it as a default browser. And God, Windows is gonna make me do some settings here, isn't it? Uh, Firefox, excellent, so I've changed that. Another reason why I'm sure why I'm actually installing the browser in front of you all is due to the fact that, as I said, you shouldn't be using uh, Internet Explorer for this. Although you probably can, but no guarantees there really. The very first thing that we're going to do is open up whatever page comes along and use our favorite search engine. You can use whichever one you want and type in Adam. Okay, that didn't really help us out a lot, right? <laughs> we, but it did actually. Hmm. Okay, so it did open up the site. It's https colon slash slash adam.io. So go ahead and click on it. And 
regardless of whether you are on a Mac or whether you are on Windows, the, the site should recognize your user agent by default from where it will pull your operating system information and it will serve you the right download straight away. So if you're on a Mac, it's going to say download for Mac or something like that. Anyway, just go ahead and click on download Windows installer. Okay, so save file. Again, if you really need me to do a setup tutorial for Mac, do let me know, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do one anyway. So no worries there. The installation is pretty straightforward. Although on Linux, it's somewhat different. I would say simpler, but that's uh, mostly, it's not really that I can claim for any technical reasons. Again, it's mostly because I'm a Linux user and I'm just more more acquainted with it than I am with Windows. But as I said, once you actually set the development environment up, it will be the same across all three platforms with only minor cosmetic differences. So you won't have any problems there. Depending on your internet connection, this might take some time, hopefully not too long. While this is going on, we can go ahead and safely open up another tab without any worries of canceling the download. And we're going to go ahead and start looking for Node.js. Node.js. Okay, so just go ahead and jump over to their website. And there is the version 61610. This is the current version with the latest features. But I am going to go ahead and download the 4.4.4 LTS. LTS stands for Long Term Support. Those are the stable versions. And during your learning stages, it is always best to download the long-term support ones or the stable versions. Because as a beginner, you really, and I cannot emphasize this enough, you really don't want to be messing around with all the undocumented bugs and encountering new problems to which, which haven't been solved and to go about solving them yourself. You will lose an incredible amount of time. So just go ahead and select the LTS version Believe me when I tell you, it makes quite literally no difference to you as a beginner. There are differences, of course, between these two versions, but to you as a beginner on this level, it is not of any importance. I assure you of that. It is far better to go with the long-term support one. You can, of course, go with the latest one, the unstable one, as it is usually referred to. This is a common terminology. You have the LTS and you have unstable testing. This is also used for operating systems. For example, for Linux, you will generally have the unstable version and the long-term support one. If you're a beginner, you will always go for the long-term support, or if you are like, if you want the operating system for a server, you will, of course, go for the long-term support one. You're, you're not insane to go for the unstable one with the server. Now, what do I mean with by unstable and long-term support. This is a general term that that is applicable to across pretty much all the applications out there. Unstable doesn't mean that it's faulty, that it's bad, etc. It just means that there are a lot of new features there that are yet to be tested out, that it's still in the development stages, and you are bound to encounter problems which you will need to solve. Now, I could, I, it wouldn't be that much of a bother for me or for somebody or some people that I know that are pretty good with it. They would be able to solve the problems in a relatively short amount of time and would probably enjoy doing so. But for you, while you are learning, I strongly advise that we go with the stable version so that we don't spend too much time uh, fixing bugs, uh, going about solving problems which are really not up to you to solve as a beginner. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is go jump over to GitHub. And this will be our development server. So to say, in a way, don't take that with a grain of salt. We're going to go ahead and type in angular slash quick start. We're going to go ahead and press enter there. And the very first, it, you sh it should be the very first one. So it's spelled angular slash quick start. Go ahead and click on it. Now there are a lot of things here, like quite literally that we will not actually require, but there is really no need to filter this file out. I mean, we probably will at a certain point of time to an extent, 
but the additional files here which we won't use will not do you harm so to say so don't worry about it too much just go ahead and click on download zip and we're gonna go ahead and say save file i don't believe that i have anything that can open this file up but that is yet to be seen okay uh quick start extract extract all downloads no i don't want you to extract it there i shall extract it to desktop okay so select that will be the selection of the folder so just click on browse find your desktop click on it and then click on select folder and then click on extract yep there we go the extraction process should be fairly fast I did not require the additional tools. As I said, this is a fresh install of Windows. I have not installed any additional tools, including the browser. I've installed it 10 minutes prior to the beginning of this tutorial. And just double click on it so you can see everything is in here. All the, all the, necessary, all the necessary files are there. Now let me just go ahead and see, check if my downloads are done. My downloads are done. Okay, so now that we have everything that we need to begin the installation and setup procedure, that we've pulled everything from the net, we're gonna go ahead and proceed into actually installing these things and setting them up one by one. We shall do that in part two.